for the end of the first day. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and introduce ourselves. So I'm Eitan Horowitz. I'm the uh, senior mobile editor at CNN, uh, the editorial lead um, for the CNN mobile products, and I'll be uh, moderating today. Um, you can see our hashtag is pushalerts14. We definitely want you guys to tweet. We'll be checking, as well as having some time for discussion. So let's go ahead and have each of the panelists uh, introduce themselves first. My name is Alyssa Merritt. I'm the head of strategic consulting at Urban Airship, which does push notifications. And we work with brands such as ABC, NBC, CBS, News Corp, um, Sky News, uh, as well as a lot of local affiliates and across all industries and verticals. Hello, I'm Deepesh. I lead the product team at, uh, at CBSSports.com. Uh, we build fantasy products as well as uh, news, scores, and stats for all, all major sports. And I'm Corey MG. I'm a co-founder of Breaking News. All right. So before we get started, I just wanted to put up um, a couple of quick ground rules. So when you talk about alerts, as the uh, topic says, the good, the bad, and the ugly, you'll get a lot of opinions. I hate push alerts. I love push alerts. I hate CNN's push alerts. I love CNN's push alerts. I hate sports alerts. I love sports alerts. I want more. I want less. It's a very, uh, it's a topic that gets people really talking and, and going. Um, and so, I mean, we're gonna show uh, some ones that we say are good, bad, and ugly. There's bad CNN ones, bad NBC ones, where Corey works, bad, you know, from all over the place. M maybe um, your news organization might be up here as a good or bad or both. Nothing here is meant to be personal. You know, we're all kind of learning. Push alerts is, is still pretty new. And as, as you'll see, it's a very, um, powerful kind of medium. So let's just all kind of be friends and, you know, not, not take anything personally um, because, you know, there's probably alerts, those of us that work in this space that we've all sent that maybe we could have done better or wish we wouldn't. So just, you know, put it out there. Um, so a couple of intros. So talking about this, this is a quote that, um, that Corey put up, you know, about the power of it. And it says, it's hard to overhype the power of mobile push notifications. For the first time in human history, you can almost tap two billion people on the shoulder. Um, that's Ariel Seidman, founder of Gig Walk. Um, so thinking about that, that's true. And as sort of a counterpoint to that power to tap two billion people on the shoulder, you know, I put up uh, Uncle Ben from Spider-Man, or actually Voltaire, the with great power comes great responsibility. So being able to tap two billion people on the shoulder, you know, you can really piss off a lot of people with that ability. So it's not something that, uh, that we sh you should look at lightly, and that's a lot about what we're gonna talk about. So uh, to help cue this up, we're gonna show a video. Any intro for this video, Corey? This is a video we made, that some of you may have seen already, to, uh, to, to basically mock push notifications that annoy people. All right, let's see, cue this up. Beep, 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 breaking news. Justin Bieber due in court today, and he's recording three songs. <gasps> breaking news. Justin Bieber was just arrested for drunk driving really fast in the courtroom. <gasps> breaking news. Bieber takes stand in own defense. I am so uninstalling you, pushing the value of street. <laughs> it, it's about Bieber. Bieber! It's not breaking news! Bieber time! Really? <laughs> Let's just move on to, uh, to some pie charts. Me, me, you me! Hate? Bieber loves pie! <laughs> the Breaking News mobile app brings you alerts tailored for you. We won't waste your time or try your patience. Now, find out when a big story breaks near you with proximity alerts, only with the Breaking News app. It's not working. Oh, press and hold until he starts wiggling. Oh. There. <laughs> we right. call that guy Alert Man. Alert Man? Alert Man, Where'd you yeah. find him? He's actually a comedian in Seattle. Yeah. All right. Um, so that gives you a little bit about, you know, what we're talking about, about how, how powerful that is. So we're going to have Alyssa, uh, because she works, you know, with lots of media companies around Push Alert Strategy, kind of give a little bit of an overview of, you know, why this is important, you know, why you should care about Push Alerts, kind of the way things are going. So, as you know, your app really does matter. You probably spent a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of effort to actually get some of those alerts out. And what we're seeing is that apps beat web browsers and that seven out of every eight minutes is spent actually in apps. So that's pretty impressive. 
Um, if we go to the next thing, what we're seeing is that there really are winners and losers in push notifications. Um, in media in particular, when we looked at the aggregate response of all of our clients, we saw that response and opt-in to push notifications could be as low as 23% or as high as 96%. And what we're seeing is that the winners really have a couple of things in common. They're really thinking about personalization, contextualization, using location, and making sure that people actually are getting things that they care about. I think, you know, Alert Man is a great example of uh, what not to do. So what we're seeing is that when you do it right, push really can help you retain users. So this is looking at media retention, the percentage of users who've opened uh, the app. And when you have welcome series, when you have content that people care about, it actually keeps them engaged a lot longer. And also, Alyssa is going to give a little bit of a, I mean, a 101. I assume, we assume this group is pretty savvy. Um, let's see, how many people in here do something around push alerts as part of their job? Okay, right, so we'll go through this pretty quickly. There's obviously some new stuff with iOS 8, so just to kind of help level set, uh, Alyssa, if you want to continue. Sure. So push alerts light up your screen, and as you saw from Alert Man, they can be, um, you know, interruptive. And for things like breaking news, sometimes that's really important. You can also use badging, and we say at Urban Airship that not every push deserves a shove. And so if you have the Starbucks app or, you know, if you've, you've been looking at your email lately, you probably have that little red uh, button someplace on your phone, and that's to bring you people who have inbox anxiety back into an app. So that's a really effective technique uh, that you can be using. And of course, there's an inbox. It's a great place to store articles, maybe serial content that somebody might be interested in getting. But there's more. So what we're seeing now is really an evolution of push. It's push and pull. So you probably heard about iOS 8 and about interactive notifications. This is a really exciting feature uh, that's new. And, and Corey and, and some of uh, the folks up here have all been exploring this area. So what's great about interactive notifications is that you're allowing people to actually have an opinion, to engage with your content. Um, you can see in this breaking news example that you can either share or, I can't read the, uh, the last bit. Watch this. Or watch this. Um, and then finally, there's widgets. So what's really cool about widgets is that, and actually I don't think that's a widget example. Yeah, that's, that's, that's oh, it is a sports right? example. Yeah, do you want to no, talk, talk about, about that? Yeah, sure. So, so that's a widget where um, it's both information and news. It's, uh, you know, for a fantasy player, it's a score on all the games they're playing, as well as for all the players that they own on their fantasy team, a stream of news. So it's almost like a dashboard of you're, you're the GM of your team, and anytime you pull down the Today screen, uh, without having to no notify them each time, it's still a way to quote unquote push that information to them without having to light up their screen each time. And so what's really interesting is that Android has had uh, interactive notifications for quite a while. But now that Apple has reached parity, uh, we're seeing a huge uptick in people excited about this feature. So uh, with widgets, you're able to have sports scores. You're able to uh, incorporate images. There's a lot of great things that you can do with these, these two new features um, with mobile. How many guys are using widgets in their apps today at all? Android or iOS? A few of you guys are. Yeah, I mean, it's right, like I said, it's a, sort of a very new thing. New York Times, as you pull down today in the New York Times, they've had it on Android, now it's on iOS, BuzzFeed. So it's definitely, you know, very new, but sort of the next uh, area. Um, and then also continuing, do you want to do this? So this is really important. Um, as I mentioned, I work across a variety of different industries. And I think one of the areas that media really excels is getting people engaged in the stories that they care about. Um, when I look at some of the other industries in the more consumer goods area, they're a lot more focused perhaps on the top of the funnel, getting people to actually download the app. This is a technique that a lot of uh, brands that are doing a great job of converting uh, people who download into active, uh, engaged users. It's the idea of asking for a push notification opt-in uh, using a, a screen that's not generated by Apple to actually present your value proposition, the reason why somebody would want to opt into notifications, and then using the Apple prompt to get them to engage. Uh, similarly, you, you could do something like this with location. It's a great way to make sure that people know the value that you're offering with your notifications. Do you find, Alyssa, that 
like the iOS one, which is on the right, people are so used to it that they just hit no, no, and that's why you kind of add. Especially because you can't customize that box, uh, but you can certainly customize the screen that you've created to precede that Apple opt-in. And that's another good point. Um, in Android, you don't have to actively opt in like this. So um, I think later today we'll probably talk a little bit about the differences between iOS and Android and some of the interesting things that we've been seeing uh, with those different channels. And one other bonus of doing a pre-ask like this mm -hmm. is if you can, you now have the ability to go back and ask again later without having to force the user to go into settings and dig in and try to find out how to turn notifications back on or turn location back on. So this is becoming really the norm now where you double ask, you do a prompt that's yours. If they say yeah, then they get hit by the Apple prompt and they, the high percentage of those people then say yes. If they say no, then they haven't turned it off in the system, at the system level and therefore you can then ask them again easily and if they say yes, you can turn it on mm -hmm. more, more easily. The, you know, sending people into settings is just uh, you know, a terrible idea. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so talking about sharing. Yeah, so one of the, the really interesting new features of interactive notifications is the ability to share. Um, I think this has been a, a challenge. There's been a lot of different ways that people have approached social sharing in media. And now you're able to actually share an article that you care about using notifications. So you can see that first screen is you know swiping to the left to expose the buttons. One of them is share. You can actually tap the share button and you're prompted to you know, dismiss, share, or view, and then able to share in all of the different social channels and even you know, pre-populate the message that somebody might push out, though they would have the ability to, uh, to change that or enhance it. We were talking earlier, I mean, we, we're not sure how many people are actually doing, like consumers know about this, and what do you, what do you think about that, Corey, is that? Yeah, it just struck me when I got iOS 8 that it was pretty hidden, and I just, I did the little left swipe on the uh, lock screen of a, interact, a notification, and it would reveal those options, and I showed it to several people, and they're like, whoa, I don't know what that. So it's still, I think, rather unknown, but I think over time, it'll either be surfaced more or people just get used to it. Um, cool. So, one, so continuing, and this is a little bit, you know, getting a little bit more into tactics and and uh, which types of alerts. So I have some from CNN. So one thing that, that I think, you know, I think we all agree about, about a good alert, right, is not to tease too much and, and to realize that it's okay for the alert to stand on its own and not to be like, you know, always think like, well, it's only gonna succeed if people tap on it and go in the apps. Like, no, an alert, uh, if people come to rely on breaking news or CNN or CBS Sports for an alert, it's okay if they never open it because you're, you're uh, providing a reliable service to them. So I put some up from CNN where both of those two, there's a lot of information in there and you probably don't have to open the story. Now, if you're really interested in it, you might want to, but you, you get the full story there. Um, I, I don't know, how many of you guys know or use the app Nuzzle? You guys know Nuzzle a little bit? So it's kind of interesting when it's outside of a news, but it's really uh, surfacing um, stories that a lot of your Twitter friends are sharing. So you can see from my screen, like this was, um, you know, these are a bunch of media stories. And but what I thought was interesting there is like, it's a tease in the sense that you want to read the story, right? Because you can't read the whole story right there. But it does give you that information, um, you know, in terms of what that's about. So I think it's it's important that, that we, we think of that, and we'll get to some examples later. I mean, particularly working for a TV company, there's a lot of temptation to really want to use alerts to like get people to watch TV or get them to open the app. And so it's important to think that an alert is kind of its own thing, and that's OK. Um, and we should you know, kind of keep doing that. So we consider that a good practice. Any thoughts on, on the tease? No? I'm, okay. actually, Go ahead. I'm actually going to say I think that there's an interesting balance what are you getting judged on? I know that one of the challenges uh, some organizations face is actually getting funding or making a business case for notifications or for staffing for notifications. If you are ad-driven, maybe you do want to tease a little bit to get people to open up and to explore a story. If you're breaking news-driven and you're more about the brand experience and the user experience of getting news in a timely fashion, what, what you're suggesting makes a lot of sense. So I think having an awareness of why you're sending and what the value is for your user is pretty important. As yeah, it's a good point. It's interesting when you think about alerts and you think more broadly than news. So if you think about the other notifications or alerts you get from Instagram or Facebook, right? So you get an alert that says, you know, um, you know, Corey Bergman commented on your photo to going right to the thing. 
Um, but it's, it's a good point that, you know, it's, it's, it's tough. That's why, you know, I don't think there's ever going to be any right or wrong answer with this stuff. Um, it's kind of why we're having the chat today. Um, another one, uh, similar vein, like I think because alert um, is so prominent and that if you send something and if there's either a correction or additional information, you should follow it up, you know, kind of in that same format. So from the, the shooting at LAX, um, I think last year, you know, there was all kinds of stuff and, and Corey and his organization talk about how they decide what to send and all. But if you do go ahead and decide, hey, we feel comfortable with this information, officer was dead, two people were dead, and you send it out and you alert it out and then you find out, oh, that's not the case, you better alert out, you know, the new information. And then, you know, similarly, yeah, we'll talk about sort of the watch live, kind of those type of alerts. We send one saying this is going to happen, and that, that shouldn't be it for the night because we've sort of, you know, told people who may not have gone and watched it, so you want to follow up, you know, to, to say kind of what, um, what happened to follow that up with. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the, the hardest things to do as an editor, right, is to send out a correction as a push alert. Yeah. But you kind of have to do it. And it's, you know, our policy at Breaking News, if we, if we materially have an incorrect, uh, you know, detail in a push alert, we're going to send a correction push. I and mean, that's just the way we do it. We do that, that's the same philosophy across all platforms. But yeah, it does make you double check. And our team, we're all in Slack as our chat client, and uh, editors usually will post what they're about to post, about to publish, and then everybody will quick check it. And then and about 10 seconds later, everyone's like, yep, that's good. And they copy paste it, throw it in the, the to, pu to publish it out. So it helps catch those, um, those errors before we send them out. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting point. One, one of the things that's kind of cool, like, so you'll notice I have a lot of screenshots in here. Like, I save a lot of screenshots going back several years. There's some alert screenshots that are over two years old in here. Um, so things look a lot different. But I mean, one of the reasons I do it is, right, I, if I see something that I really like, I take a screenshot. If I see something I really don't like, I take a screenshot. And like, <laughs> our users do that too, right? Like, it's a lot easier to take a screenshot of an alert on your phone than it is of the TV screen, of your computer. So you see if you screw up an alert, you're going to see screenshots of that very quickly on Twitter in a way that you often don't do in other mediums. So that, that should add kind of another layer to, um, to really thinking, about, thinking through. And we're going to talk about workflow uh, in a little bit. But I mean, that's like, like I said, I have, I have lots and lots and lots and lots of screenshots because it's easy, right? And, it's, you know, and, and kind of for this panel, like, oh, let me just go through my screenshots. And that's what, that's what we did. Um, so kind of touching on the next topic about, about linking and kind of thinking about the behavior of things like Instagram and Facebook and all that, right? So um, right, you get an alert, and I'm sure lots of you have had this experience or your users, and oh my god, that's so crazy. You tap on it, and there's nothing there. Well, well, I want to know more about that, right? And those of us that work in news and, and those of us that you know, work specifically in mobile, you probably know, like, well, like, what do you do? You don't wait to send the alert until there's a story, but then you're frustrating people, and what if the story comes after you send it, and how do you link that, and can you make the change, and what about people that are going to check the alert five hours later? So there's a lot there, and I, I, in the past year, you've started to see more news organizations kind of addressing this problem. So the Times, uh, you know, if you would tap on their alert, you would come in to their app, and you see the sort of breaking news, you know, banner at the top, um, and I think you would actually probably go right to the story, and then in this case, you know, you would see this is a developing story there, so there's a little stub, and the check for updates, I assume, is sort of a, a web view or web page, so that, you know, there's, all, there's at least something there. And, and you'll, there's a lot of different strategies out there, I mean, um, but this is something that I think is, is good practice, because otherwise, you know, you're just going to frustrate people. One of the cool things we do is if you get an alert on breaking news, you open it, we actually drop you in the stream. So it, whatever story it's about or whatever topic it's about, you just scroll it down. You can see everything leading up to that. And if you've opened your, you've opened the alert after a new item has come in, you can scroll up, and there's the new item above it. So we'll just drop you into the, the stream of information. Uh, so we kind of avoid that. Does it, um, does it anchor you? Like if you come like later, does it go to that one? You have to. Kind of yeah, it'll drop you in the stream wherever that. Where that one was. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, we yeah. one of them. Um, we, Turner, I have a couple examples in there, um, owns a company, Bleacher Report, that's got a good team stream app, and they, they do that as well, where you, know, you can imagine sports, there's a lot of them, so they kind of anger you, so you don't have to go digging and kind of yeah. searching through it. Um, all right, so we're going to talk about the bad a little bit. So it's like we said, remember our ground rules, nothing personal. Um, we're all kind of learning. We've all made mistakes. Um, this one actually is CNN. So um, you want to talk about this one since this came from, from uh, your report? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> 
so, <laughs> so Urban Airship uh, keeps tabs on the good, the bad, and the ugly uh, as well. And I, I think this really talks about personalization and, and context. Uh, you can see for the first one that Alexandra is very excited about Will and Kate's baby. Uh, maybe she, she shouldn't have gone to CNN for that, maybe TMZ or... Although people. I think we did alert it, so yeah. I'm surprised. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but Michael, you know, Michael didn't want to hear anything about it. So there's always balance, and, and I think one of the best practices is thinking about how users express their preferences, whether it's explicit preferences in a preference center or behavioral preferences, what they actually click on. Uh, or kind of a combination. I think uh, Breaking News will we'll show some examples later about how they really have made this into an art form. Um, okay, so we're going to go keep going. So here's, so here's another one. Um, again, nothing personal. So I think when you, when you think about alerts, right, and, and you think, and there's sort of two levels with you have personalization or not. So I think, um, so this was iPhone 6 day, right? And there was within 35 minutes from my phone, Three alerts, right? I'm into the iPhone, I'm into Apple, but even I thought, you know, maybe this was a little bit much. You know, somebody else might not. I know USA Today now does have uh, the personalization that you can select. I, I think this went out generally, though. So just again, thinking about in mind, you know, in the case of what uh, the whole world tapping two billion people on the shoulder for your news organization, however many hundreds of thousands or millions of subscribers you have, like. Think about that every time you're about to send and like, hey, do we want in the span of a half an hour to tap this many people on the shoulder three times with the same thing? Maybe we do, you know, maybe if, you know, or maybe we don't. So just kind of keeping that in mind. And, and again, I think we all agree that personalization and, and options is where we need to go. I think our news organizations are we're probably not, Corey and Breaking News is, is sort of a leader in that. Not all of us are, are there yet. So just depending on where you are, kind of always keeping that um, in mind. It's the number. So um, this one I thought from a sports one was interesting. So Bleacher Report, you know, uh, has, you can subscribe to your favorite teams and all that, but then they also have this kind of spoiler. So you can say, hey, yeah, I'm a fan of, you know, in, in my case, Maryland basketball, but you know what? I'm DVRing the game, so I do not want the score. I want, you know, anything else about Maryland, and then you can kind of switch that off. So there's, so as this tech, as this um, technology is kind of evolving, you're, you're sort of seeing interesting ways. And I know for, for CNN and for others, and there, you'll see a lot, anytime there's an Olympics, right? And, you know, you send out alerts, and, and particularly if it's time delayed, like uh, the London ones will have, you know, it's huge backlash, right? On Twitter, you can do things like uh, tweet a link that has the results. In an alert, it's a little bit harder. Yeah, you can sort of link to things, so there are various kind of strategies employed, but I thought that was kind of an interesting personalization. Um, so Corey has some more kind of going through personalization and, uh, and kind of what you guys do. Yeah, so we have, beyond just the, what we call editor alerts, which is the common alert that sends out to everybody, we can do topic alerts and proximity alerts. So topic alerts are you can set alerts for any of over 40,000 topics. So whenever there's breaking news about it, then you get an alert about it. Um, so this is very different than Google Alerts. Google Alerts is a keyword mentioned in a news story. We are, something just broke about this thing just now. Here's, to our best of our ability, we think the original source for it. Um, so in this case, if you, you I search for media, and that's a topic in the system. So if you want breaking news about the media industry, you can sign up right there. And then it pops up this little thing that says, hey, do you want push alerts for this? It's going to average, was this? I can't even read it. It says uh, the t this topic averages three alerts per day. Yeah, three alerts per day. So we give users a heads up about how many alerts they can expect. Because w as a user, what's the first thing you do if your phone's blowing up? You, find, you know what app it is, right? What's the fastest thing that you can possibly do? Well, you can uninstall the app. That's the fastest action much faster than going into an app and changing the settings or going into the iOS settings and going down to the notification center and finding the app and then turning the thing off. So we want to be able to make sure up front that people know what they're going to get so we don't have that, that backlash on us. And just uh, so we had a bad USA Today, I think my friend Patty might be in here, we have a good USA Today as well because they do offer personalization and, and quiet time as well. Um, so going on with, uh, with what Breaking News does, this is more. Uh, and then, yeah, this is... Um, so you can see if you have something in your watch list, it bolds it on the left there, and then you can manage everything, all the topics in your watch list, and just go in and one tap at this point, just tap uh, alerts on or off for any of those topics that you'd like to see. You can also see what's trending, and then you can mute any topic as well, which is actually muting is our most popular uh, activity in the app. Very cool, very cool. 
Um, and then on proximity, we send uh, proximity alerts. If you are near a breaking story that just happened, uh, our editors will make a decision to not only whether to send an alert, but what geography to send the alert to, right? So if you, uh, so Alaska just had an earthquake here about an hour and a half ago, we sent a proximity alert to Alaska. So that can be as wide as a state. We can go down to a metro area or a city or actually a neighborhood if we need to and alert people there that something near happened to them. That's different than a local news alert. This is something just happened to you. You might need to take action uh, to avoid it or you just have a burning curiosity about it um, because you see the big column of smoke. You just felt the earth shake. Uh, maybe the jail just had an escaped convict. Uh, there's a, you know, a mandatory boil of water order for your city. There's a lot of things that we can use geography for that's really powerful. And, we, and the new app, by the way, you can, the new iOS app, we have a nearby view. You can tap nearby and see breaking news is happening near you and you can adjust the radius. You can slide the little thing at the top of the map and adjust the radius from one mile around you to 100 miles around you to get just the breaking news you need. And it also will show, so those partners, of the local news partners that we have, those tweets from those um, local TV stations and newspapers that have a location in them will automatically appear in there as well. So it's not just what we're publishing, but also what news organizations are publishing in real time. All right, so now we're gonna get into a little bit of the ugly, very briefly, and then we're gonna get to some discussion. Um, Corey, you want to tell people what that's not breakingnews.com is, uh, the website, uh, if not? Yeah, we made a Tumblr just to kind of make fun of different alerts. We even included one of our own. NBC, so which of course, owns Aton, Corey's company. Anytime so. he's going to pick NBC to put it up there on top, it's going to get in trouble. That one. That was the um, it's fine, me. I actually put that on the blog, so. What's on your blog? No, I, yeah, I did. I put it but up. But I will say, I, I, to the top one, so again, <laughs> and not, not being personal, I sort of put, you know, be very careful when sending testing alerts. Um, as those of you that work in mobile, right, it's part of it, hey, we got a new feature, we got a new app, we just want to make sure alerts work, so we go into debug mode or we go into developer mode, you know, and we send an alert that says text, right? It says test, right? There was one, I didn't include earlier this week, that was uh, very bad, there was five of them that were all like test, 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 you know, so it's the kind of thing, it's funny, when you see one of these on Twitter, all the sort of different mobile editors kind of come on and are sort of like, you know, there but for the grace of God, go I, kind of kind of <laughs> thing, because people can relate to either yeah. having this happen to them or just being really freaked out and paranoid that it could happen. So I always say like, hey, first, be very careful. I mean, we do things like the system to send the test ones and to send the real ones. If you can change the permissions so the person sending the test one is not technically able to send the real ones, like that's good, or just, you know, hey, use some real alert text. You know, certainly don't put anything uh, inflammatory or, you know, or curse words in it, as I've seen that has happened. I mean, having one go out that says test is bad, but, you know, not as bad as something, uh, you know, that, that's really ugly. Um, yeah, never put fake stories in. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the ESPN one we were talking about earlier, I mean, I guess there was a, a reason somebody knows for it. They, had a, they did a deal with Google to display results, or what was it, video? Or was it? So. I think so, yeah. Right, but I'm not exactly sure what, yeah. what, what happened. But. It was just bizarre. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's the kind of thing where you just like, <laughs> if, you were, if you stop and think, like, okay, do we really want to send, people that have downloaded our app, you want to send them an alert that says, go out of our app to Google and search for something. <laughs> that, you know, you can't copy and paste from that. Like, there's no link from that. Like. Even if there was some business arrangement or reason to do that, it just, it just doesn't really make sense from a, a user perspective. Um, so, so yeah, that, that, that's one that we put in there. And, and Corey's Tumblr has, has more examples as well. But like I said, if you find them, be nice. You know, it could, could happen to you someday. So um, we're all kind of doing it to learn and not to you know, rag on each other uh, too bad. All right, so let's get to some discussion. So we have some specific discussion topics that I'm going to ask these guys, but I do want you all um, to weigh in on. So if there's a question that comes up, uh, raise your hand. There is a mic uh, if you just have general stuff, but we're going to kind of go through. We have a half hour left, so we'll have some good discussion uh, around this stuff. Um, so starting with workflow, I'm going to start by asking the panel uh, sort of like, okay, when your organization decides we want to send an alert. How is that decision made? Who makes it? And then, like, what happens technically? Who does it? You know, who approves it? Corey mentioned a little bit. So, if you guys want to each, uh, maybe Deepesh start sure off I with can, that one. Sure, I can start. Um, Use the mic. So, so we have a news desk, um, and uh, when something is happening in sports, uh, there are 
clearly talking about it and uh, thinking about putting it on the homepage as well as thinking about setting an alert. Uh, those two systems are tied and they're effectively the same system. So the person that's making the decision on if something is breaking news or the group of people that are, they go into one system and they type the headline and they effectively have a few boxes they can check, such as make it show up on the homepage, make it show up as an alert in the app, uh, and effectively they hit send. And that fires off a couple processes, and one of them is to send the alert to everyone that's subscribed to a breaking news alert. Another one is to publish it to the homepage. Uh, and the other is it actually creates kind of an empty content item so that you know once more information is found out about that event, they can actually plug in content and then there's a developed story. So if you swiped into the notification right away, you wouldn't really get much information because it's developing. And as there's information created, that empty story body is then populated. Um, the nice thing about this whole thing is you know, we, we invested the time to do the work so that it was in the workflow of an editor uh, and of the news desk. I've seen a lot of, e even our organization in the past, there's a separate system you'd have to log into and uh, set up a mobile alert and it was clunky and no one really wanted to do it and you know the news desk person is just trying to get the thing out as quickly as possible. Um, now it's all streamlined in one place, as is Twitter actually, so to get it out on Twitter as well. So it's all in the same kind of workflow. Um, the other nice thing is we also don't send only breaking news alerts. Uh, if you're the fan of a team, you might want to know that, um, you know, if you're the fan of the Green Bay Packers, you might want to know that Aaron Rodgers got hurt in practice. That's not breaking news, but it's news. And so every time our editors are publishing any piece of content, they have the option to send it as not a breaking news alert, but a team news alert, or actually another type of alert called a fantasy news alert, where if you own Aaron Rodgers on your fantasy team, you'd want to know about that information. So we slice content up to a variety of different ways and put it in the workflow of the editors so that they have to do no extra work. And that's really the only way you can make it all scale by creating, integrating hooks into your own content management system uh, to, to push out the alerts. It, it will take you more technology time to do that, but so it's really the only way you can scale it. So that's, that's, that's kind of what we do in terms of how an alert gets sent. And then um, just a question. On, yeah. so, you, so all those things you said about slicing and dicing, like is it a breaking news for this team? Is it a team alert? Mm -hmm. Is it a fantasy alert? I assume then those sync up with user preferences? Yes. Yeah, we, we, have, we have a detailed preference center, but uh, as a fan of a team, you can sign up for team news, you can sign up for scoring alerts, you can sign up for uh, injury alerts. You know, we have a variety of different things you can sign up for. And so uh, every article that we, a sports site publishes typically gets tagged by a team, as well as a variety of other things. So uh, there's a system in the background that's checking if it's tagged by a team and the editor said it was an alert, it gets sent to those group of people. And then it sounds like for those three ones, they're pretty clear. So th is there not like a lot of debate about right. is this this kind like it's usually pretty clear? Uh, not, not all the time. Sometimes there's uh, like in the NFL every week uh, we put out a power rankings story, and uh, that's more of just entertainment and informational. And we actually send that to all the team news subscribers, and we end up, we end up tagging it with every single team just because it's fun to know where your team stacks up in the power rankings. And so we actually send that out. That's not breaking news, but we don't, we're not sending it as breaking news. We're sending it as quote unquote team news. And that actually has a really high open rate. So would um, like Ray Rice stuff, would that be team? Uh, yeah, that uh, it depends on what, what, what point of the, you know, when that came out, it'd be breaking news. But um, it really depends. It's, uh, it's editor's discretion yeah. on when. And I think, it's, I think I'm really glad we have Deepesh up here because sports is like so interesting with the alerts and like, you know, a lot of people you talk to, like they love their sports alerts. Like they, they can't live, whether they do fantasy or not, like the, it's, it's so powerful that it, uh, it's often interesting and we'll, we'll get into this a little bit to see what can news borrow from that? How is that different? Um, Corey, you want to weigh in on how your workflow is in terms of alerts? Yeah, it's, it's very interesting to talk about the CMS as being fully integrated, right? It's like not two separate things mm -hmm. that you do and I, I think that's, it's so, I get so fascinated in the journalism space, uh, which I've been in forever, because people talk about certain companies, certain startup CMSs. Oh, these CMSs are so magical. They do all these things, but they don't do any push alerts. Apps are this huge, massive, growing, number one channel for uh, digital media in audience, in time spent, fastest growing. And these CMSs that everyone thinks are the greatest things in slide spread don't work push notifications. So 
all this stuff has got to get wired up, and we've spent a lot of time doing that. We built the first, I think, really mobile CMS three years ago. So um, it's hard. It's work that has to be done. But uh, as you can see, the, the value here is tremendous. And then it's not just you, then if you're able to take different pieces of content because you have metadata associated with them that work great on push notifications, then when there are other ways to distribute content in a push way, it'll also work with that down the road. So. That's uh, you know putting the effort into it now is well worth it. And then Alyssa, since you you know work with a lot of different companies, what have you seen as far as the workflow in terms of how they decide to do it, who does it, and then once they decide, like, is it their main CMS? Is it a separate one? Like, you know, what what have you seen as you worked with companies? Sure, I think Corey t uh, touched on something really important. It's a tagging strategy, and there's certainly using tags to actually send out those alerts that somebody likes a certain sports team. But those tags can also be used as insight, so you have a better sense of what your audience cares about. So we're actually seeing a lot of people add tags because they want to gather more information about their readership, and I think that that could potentially be used in ad sales, as could potentially location. Um, I, I've seen a lot of different newsrooms and a lot of different approaches to managing content. I think having a sense of uh, governance, like we saw uh, in the early days of email, is really important. Figuring out, you know, who sends, uh, why they're sending, and then how it would scale. Um, some of the the newsrooms I've worked with have had, you know, homegrown CMSs. Uh, one here in the Chicago area has one. I think is is actually a really smart, well constructed uh, content management system that lets some of their local editors actually have a voice and and send alerts. Um, so I think that's a, a great way to kind of you know, operate. Mm -hmm. I'll just throw in for a second for CNN and then I want to hear from, from the audience. I mean, we, um, I think we're still working on a lot of our systems and some things are still separate. What's interesting though at somewhere like CNN is like, and maybe a lot of places, that the push alert is sort of descended from a lot of things, particularly on a TV right. So CNN, breaking news, like that's, that's our thing, you know, 30 years. So if you go back and like, okay, TV, you know, breaking news, right, on TV, right, that's one thing. And then that transitions to the web, you know, a breaking news banner, like, at the top, right? And then email comes along, like, a breaking news email. And then SMS comes along, like, a breaking news SMS. And then push comes along, a you know, breaking news app alert. But I would still argue that the app alert is different than all those because you get it whether you, like, kind of want it or not. I mean, you've signed up, you get it, right? You TV, you don't want to watch TV, turn it off, right? Like, that's, and, you know, you're in a lot of those, uh, you, you don't want to see a breaking news banner on CNN.com, like, don't go to CNN.com. So, because we're still working on a lot of these technologies, we have a real conversation about, should we send this? Should we send one now and one after this event happens? Should we wait to see what happens? Should we combine two? You know, it's the middle of the night. Should we send one at all? We, we have these conversations um, because we need to, and it's a lot of people. Uh, it is our sort of homepage team that, that's doing it, but I mean, I think it's, it's, you know, it's the workflow part of it, um, you know, it's really interesting. So folks out there, uh, yeah, go ahead. So let's talk about, and um, this is, we can jump, did it, before we jump into that, anybody want to throw in on just systems and, yeah, and workflow and all that? Yes. There are different fields. Let me just let me just repeat the question for one second as people are watching. So so she was asking Deepesh saying that since a lot of stuff is tied together, the homepage, the tweets and all that, it seems like they're very different. So kind of how do you deal with the same system? Yeah. Uh, in the past they were the same field and uh, it just wasn't ideal, but we made it into two different fields. So the Yeah, by default they're the same, but if the editor wants to override the no, the mobile one, they can because you want to be a little bit more descriptive in the mobile alert. We do the exact same thing. And is that, and um, in your systems, can you just send a push alert and not any other yeah, stuff? Yeah. yeah, I think that's but, important. But, but, but typically, I mean, our, we try to have a cross-platform mindset where if something's being sent as a notification, most likely we want it on the homepage too. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, you, you don't have to. There's no, like the, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, but you don't, you don't have, like, you can control where you have it, where you have it show up. It's a good point because, you know, I think when you think about it, we've separated things a little bit because we, like, so to your point, 
on the topic, you're going to want to send a breaking news email and a breaking news app alert, but an email might take longer, need more background, and you don't want that to slow down right. the sending of the app alert. So, so some of that I think is important. Yeah. So the question was, um, you know, that there, there can be some time, like a delay, right? You hit the button on an alert, doesn't go out right away, tweet probably goes out faster. Your question was about scooping yourself, meaning what, like, the tweet goes out before the alert, or? So, or, so is it also like, does everything need to go to all the platforms at the same time, or is it okay if it goes, you know, 30 seconds later, Twitter, and then four minutes later, the app. What do you guys think? Well, I have to say, we're pretty fast. Um, so I, I think that what might happen is actually there might be a delay more on, on some of the other channels than, than on push. Uh, you know, the ability to send out messages is in the, the seconds to hundreds of thousands, millions of, of people. I mean, we've done this for FIFA, for the World Cup, for the Olympics. So um, from a timing standpoint, I, I think that's it's probably not as, as big a deal, but I think operationally that is a big challenge. And I think it's figuring out the audience within each channel and how they might use that news that you're sending. So for a push alert, that's going to be lighting up the phone of everyday individuals. Um, your Twitter audience might be a different demographic or might use the news in a different way. They might be more inclined to share it than somebody who has a phone in their pocket. And then finally, you know, if, if you have broadcast or if you have print, each of those has a you know a set time, whether it's the newspaper going out in the morning or the evening, or you know the evening news. Um, so I think it's figuring out the cadence that's right for your audience and the right for the channel. Um, the the gentleman over there had a, a question earlier about automated alerts, and that's kind of a, an interesting follow up. Um, I think your question was, you know, aren't automated alerts annoying? Um, well, they could be if if they're not targeted and if they're not relevant to you. Um, one of the things that some of the more sophisticated um, senders of alerts are doing is actually tagging your response to a highly targeted automated alert. So for instance, um, maybe you've opted into a particular sports team and maybe it's a story about somebody breaking their leg on, on the sports team. Uh, whether you open that or not could indicate your interest in getting more of that type of content, and then you'd be able to figure, it, you'd be able to follow up after that with a follow-up story about whether that person's recovered or they're going to be benched or, or, or other things. Uh, we have the ability to tag at a pretty granular level so that those automated alerts could trigger more stories and continue the conversation from a news perspective. And, and for us, when we see automated alerts uh, in sports, all these games are going on. And so we set up automated alerts based on what people want, like every time when a goal is scored, or every time a touchdown is scored, or at the end of every quarter, or the beginning of every game to remind you of the game. So no editor is pushing those buttons. We get data feeds, and we have our own data feeds. And based on the data feed, we send out alerts. And that's what we call automated. Uh, we try to make them as rich as possible. And that one's pretty simple. In our next release, we're actually going to have the play-by-play -play of who actually scored the run. Um, it just the data comes in at different times for us, but we're working on, on, on sorting that out so that when you get that alert that Milwaukee's winning one nothing, it actually told you what happened for them to be winning one nothing. Who hit who hit a home run or who batted someone in. I mean is it Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well I mean, with earthquakes we have the ability to just target actual geographies now. Right, so then it does come it does come into, yeah. I mean, it's interesting. The things typically you see, so you see sports, you see things like financial stock apps, right? That will say, hey, your your stock closed at this today, right? Stuff that you can automate reliably. Obviously, weather. Or you get an email from Netflix saying this show is available. I mean, I think to to what Alyssa was saying, it's just like, yeah, if it's just breaking news alerts that you're sending, automation is you might want to be careful. But as you get into more like topic alerts. You know, we're going to talk a little bit about on the TV side, the sort of, you know, watch CNN or, or watch this show. I mean, you could see uh, if you were somebody that opted in to say, yes, I want to know, you know, who's on Anderson Cooper tonight. Like, we could automate that. We shouldn't call it a breaking news alert because it's not, but it's an alert 
from a from a, um, a company. There was a. Did you have what was in the front? Well, I just have yeah. Yeah. who's more on our project product engineering team um, I'm probably not going to give you the best the, the best answer um, but do you see that you know we, we, um, we recently worked on on FIFA on the World Cup uh, and we sent out messages for you know for ESPN for uh, you know, for FIFA, for a number of different organizations that were, were highlighting sports. And we didn't experience any bottlenecks then. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure how properly to answer, answer that specific question, I, I think. No, I mean, I was just gonna say, like, I, I would say, uh, and, I, and I'm gonna ask a question in here, like, I don't think that uh, all news organizations feel like, yep, our alerts is, are fast enough. Right. Who thinks who thinks their alerts are fast enough and no changes are needed the one when you guys send them out? Like you guys sound like you do, right? Because they go out pretty quickly, or maybe not. We right? can always get faster. Yeah. Right. You can always yeah. be fast. And who thinks uh, who thinks it's super slow? Like it's killing us. Like we got to do something about it. Anybody? Okay, a couple. And who thinks like you know it really should be a little bit faster? It's okay. Okay. So right. So it's somewhere we can improve. But I think it's I think it's important to your question to know what the speed is. Right, and so like, yeah. If if it if your average is four minutes, don't you know send an alert about saying you know watch this press conference, which could be thirty seconds long, right? Because you know that that a lot of people could miss that. I also think it's important when you think about the different platforms and workflow to know. And, and this is interesting at CNN. I probably have some of my colleagues in here. Like, I, I still get a little annoyed sometimes when we talk about. Uh, did you send out the breaking news email? I'm just like, well, the breaking news email subscribers are down here. Like the Apple subscribers, in terms of sheer numbers, are up here. So like, let's start saying that you sent out the, the you know, the app alert, because like that's really where the growth is. Not that email is not important, but just so knowing your how fast your alerts are, knowing, you know, do you have like SMS? Do you not? Do you have app alert? Do you have email? You know, just knowing for your organization kind of where the bulk of your uh, users are and using that to help drive, you know, resource decisions and engineering, but also just workflow. You know, if your system allows two people, one person to do the email while the other person's doing the alert, like that's great. But if one has to come before the other, you know, these are things to kind of, to keep in mind. Um, anyone else on this one? Yeah. And if you want to say where you are, cool. If not, you don't have to, but it'd be, be great to know. No, I mean, say, say what, where you work or what your name is. start a little conservatively, not because you're worried about, I think, it's basically what it is is you're, you're learning, right? So you have to sort of understand what the rhythm is. And there's a, I mean, we have very, you know, um, passionate discussions about whether or not to push something universally uh, ourselves after, after doing this for so, so long. And we test every alert and open rates and uninstall rates that are influenced by it. I mean, we, and time, time between alerts. I mean, we've studied this for so long and we still have all these debates. So it's good to kind of ease yourself into it. Um, 
and try to figure out what your philosophy is and just then once you have it, be consistent. So this is a good segue into the next discussion, which is to your point, right? Okay, you start doing it. How do you know what's working, right? How do you measure success? Is it just how many people tapped to open it? Is it how many people tapped and went to the story? And then what those metrics does that influence? If maybe Alyssa, you want to give some perspective or? Yeah, you know, to the woman from Pittsburgh, um, I think Corey makes, he's, he's making a lot of sense in his, in his response. I think there's a lot of opportunity when you're starting out to number one, define your value proposition. What are you offering that's unique? And for some of the smaller local publications, um, you know, maybe it is a, a local perspective or a local voice. And to your point earlier about um, speed to market and, and knowing how long it takes you to get out there, maybe you have a very local or personal or nuanced uh, stance about some kind of piece of national news that would provide a special value to somebody in a local market. Um, I think you could do a lot of micro-testing. So there's explicit preferences, which you saw with kind of opting into departmental level news or, or breaking news or sports teams. But then maybe you start tagging people for their behaviors, what pages or sections within your publication they spend a lot of time on. And you start micro-testing different types of content there and seeing what's resonating with your particular audience. With the, for you guys, with alerts, like if you were to say, make sure you have this metric, like what, you know, what is it, do you guys think? And what you look at when you assess, hey, that alert we sent, that one knocked it out of the park. Like how do you come up we're, with we're, that? Personally, we're not overly crazy of the open rate piece. Uh, we look more just kind of qualitatively at the subscriber counts and that they're increasing over time and not decreasing and people aren't you know, unsubscribing or deleting their app. Um, so we, we just want to see, as a percentage of our active user base, a healthy percentage of subscribers that are active, and that, that number growing as a percentage. So you guys know when an alert leads to people uninstalling the app? Or uh, we, we don't, well, personally, we don't know that specifically. Yeah. Does anybody know that? Does you don't know if it's tied to it, but then you, you like can actually really look and see if it may have influenced it, right? I see. Given the timing. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. see. Any other metrics there? I think, you know, average daily users, monthly users, or weekly users, there's certainly hard metrics. Um, some people look at opens. Some people look at, you know, influenced opens. Uh, but I actually encourage people to think about engagement metrics that might be a little softer as well. So shared, or maybe provided preferences, or other things that they can click or respond to that show that they're actively engaged with, with your organization. And certainly the fact that they're keeping, keeping your app on the phone does definitely yeah. matter. That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's the end all be all. The, uh, we also have a bunch of data that's just in the app, right? Because people woe a story if it's surprising to them. So we can see how surprising alerts are. So we can tell ones that just aren't very surprising tend to be lower on the scale and that, that influences us. We can also see uh, what people are muting and how, what they're, how quickly they're mute, muting into things. We can see how quickly, just like you, they're unsubscribing from different topics. So I mean, all that kind of comes into play. But for us, it's not driving us in like alert by alert by alert decision making. It's more of just as, as a team beginning to learn just generally what works and what doesn't. Learning that sports is very polarizing. Learning that celebrities, unless someone big just died, is very polarizing. So you make decisions differently based on different types of content. Is there anything, like I know you guys put out, like and this would not be surprising, like when Philip Seymour Hoffman died, like at the time that was like the most woed, but is there something you've learned that you're like, wow, I didn't really think people would be really into this or really not into it? Yeah, hard news, like really full strength hard news is, um, I, mean, I think it's part of our, you know, who uses us too, um, but that's probably been the most surprising. Um, we got about five minutes. We got some more on on metrics measuring. Does anybody want to throw in or ask questions on this one at all? Uh, up in the back, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So let's jump to that one for a second. <laughs> no, no, it's good. It's good. But let's jump to that one. Um, this. So. So yeah, keep going with your question. Yeah. Did you? I mean, so, so a couple things. I mean, my perspective is, would be similar working for CNN, which obviously, we're a TV company, we want people to watch TV. But you see even, even not just TV, but like the upper left, right? So Obama was, was giving a press conference and you know, CNN and NBC and Fox all said, you know, kind of watch this live, like essentially in our app. Um, what we try to do when we, when we can, if you see in the bottom right, is like, 
combine the promo with news. So like the Fox News one is just like, hey, Brett Baer is doing a show, right? I would consider that bad, um, especially if you're not personalizing it and it's just going to everybody. Whereas we tried to say, you know, watch CNN, uh, the investigation shows, you know, Rob Williams' cause of death was hanging. So you're sort of giving news and you're sort of saying, watch, you know, you see others. NBC with that sent two, where we sort of sent one. They're sort of saying, hey, watch it live, this press conference, and okay, this is what was said in the press conference. I think it's a, it's a delicate thing. And now, certainly from our standpoint, it does work. I mean, people, it's hard to track. I mean, for us, we have the ability through, you know, what's called TV Everywhere in our app and like Fox to actually watch it in there. And that is something we can track of like, hey, when we send out an alert saying watch CNN, how many people actually click and watch it? And it, and it does work when we do that. So naturally working at a TV company on the TV side, there's a lot of interest and enthusiasm like, hey, do it all the time, do it all the time. You gotta say, well, hold on, you know, just again, think about tapping 2 billion people on the shoulder. Uh, Corey's blog had that NBC Chicago one, you know. Come on, okay. you gotta love that one, right? Um, Aggressive hawks. I'm actually responsible for that. Okay. <laughs> so, tell us, so, so tell us about it. So tell us about it. So, so tell us about it. It's well, good. <laughs> What's your name? My name's Andy Grinder. I, I run that NBC Chicago uh, social media digital. So this, this uh, push notification right here, we, we saw our competitors doing this in the market. So we actively decided we were going to test it for a week to see, to see what happened if we were teasing our 10 p.m. newscast. We got a lot of thoughtful what time is this sent out? Um, this one, we, we were sending them out at about like 9.44. Okay, so pretty close. Cool. a little bit of a cushion to drive to our students. Um, so we, we did them for five days straight, and then we stopped doing them completely. The, the feedback that we got from our audience was that it wasn't valuable. Like, and, and they didn't want to get those. They wanted stories. They wanted information that was coming out now. And they said that this was noise to them. And we got quite a few people that wrote into our station and said that they were going to uninstall our app for this kind of stuff. Wow. Like, during our test period, so it was great feedback for us. We stopped doing it. That's cool. And what about your competitors? Are they That's still do? So I think we, he deserves a hand for, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, trying something, you know, listening to people, um, and then kind of changing behavior. Did somebody on this one still? Yeah. Oh, hold on. Can you? How we get in the back? Yeah. have a term uh, at my company that's called advertising. Um, and I think, you know, it, we all know that the phone is really personal, but that could be in your handbag or in your back pocket. I, I suspect that uh, people are going to be even more particular about the messages that they receive on a wearable. Um, yeah, I, so I was wearing the Google Android one for a couple weeks, and um, I found that the I could only put up with about 20% of the notification level that I would get on the phone. It just was just so much more interruptive. Yeah, it's unclear exactly how Apple's going to set this up, but uh, on Android, you could, uh, you know, you get a notification and then you could tap to open it. It would Bluetooth over to your phone and your phone would open the story. So. Um, you know, Apple is, I think, less notification focused than the watch, and they're going to be more about sensing context of where you are and being able to bring up information about that. Um, we're excited about it because our, our, you know, our story form is the alert, and the alert is the most portable unit of news on the planet. It goes everywhere, and so we're super excited about all these yeah. new form factors. I mean, I think it also goes to, you know, when you watch the Apple presentation, they talk about glancing, a glance, yeah, right? Totally. And it goes to even more to your question about... Yep should it drive to your website? Like, no, it's its own thing, right? Like, you glance it, and that's it, and maybe you dismiss it, maybe they kind of make it easy. So I think, you know, it may evolve in it, but it will be probably even less about driving to your app or your website or another platform and really just being thing on there. Yep. Uh, yep. Other, we got a minute, other just questions about whatever. Um, yeah, all the way in the back. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we um, we eliminated SMS and CNN. I mean, it was it was uh, made 
you know, public, other news organizations have, Washington Post, I think, I forget if the Times has, and it's just, you know, when you look at smartphone pe penetration and over 50% and, and like, and also mobile websites getting better and responsive, and so like, okay, if you have a smartphone, we've got an app for you, right? You know, if you don't have a smartphone or your feature phone, like, we should have a website for you, so it, it just comes down to, you know, what matters for your organization, and but maybe internationally, that might That's be a true. lot more people. You yeah, know? And it's so different it's, internationally, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Other, yeah. Yeah. So you guys are like hitting all my topics here. We're almost out of time. That's good. Let me see. So wording, right? Like some of this, right? Like you see, um, you know, again, there's a couple Fox one and others like breaking news, right? And then there's also, some places do open the app, tap on the app. That's an I mean, old one of our alerts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I know. Don't know. But, um, we don't do that anymore. Did it not work to do open the app? No, because it's just redundant. It's redundant. Um, what do you guys think? I mean, I, I, I think it, you know, obviously your publication has a voice, so I would say the alert shouldn't differ too much from that voice, but, you know, you, you want to give, uh, we try to pack as much info as we can, you know, and it's usually there's a character limit. Um, what do you guys think about wording, Deepesh? I agree. I mean, yeah trying to be concise but packing as much information and interesting information in the, in the alert as possible. Mm -hmm. Other thoughts? I did have one I thought was interesting about just, um, uh, okay, so I told you I keep a lot of old alerts. The one in the upper left, does anybody know what that was an alert for? Snowfall, right? So. <laughs> Um, and I took the picture because when I got it, I'm like, what is this? Like, what is this about? Like, that, you know, so the, the sort of the question here is just about not, and CNN, you know, we, we sort of tried one as well. Again, you see we tried to put some news and kind of a feature thing. I mean, you know, I think it all depends on what you're saying. Are you saying it's only breaking news alert? Then maybe some of that won't work. But if you have personalization, I mean, what do you guys think or the audit about, is it, I mean, you're, you're called breaking news. So no, I think there's a ton of opportunity. The problem is that a lot of consumers expect that whenever they get a notification from a news organization that it is breaking news, right? So the trick is wording it so it's clear that it's not and there is value here. Um, other questions, thought? We're just about, yeah, you want to throw in there? Yeah, I mean, it's you got it's, it's hard to track, and and yeah, I mean, you're asking people, you know, to, to do something that hey, I'm on a phone. If I if I was watching TV, I'd be watching TV. So you got to be very careful and think about that. All right, I think we're out of time. Thank you to our panelists. Thank you.